The traditional welfare department, symbolized by these two pictures of Welfare Square, was the forerunner of the production distribution department of welfare services. As in the past, efforts today in welfare production distribution are directed toward assisting priesthood officers and Relief Society leaders and the members of this worldwide church to fulfill the sacred obligation to care for the poor, the needy, the distressed, and those among us who are unable to care for themselves because of handicap or other reasons such as age. On the screen are samples of some of the 220 products that are produced and distributed to aid the poor and the needy of the kingdom. These products, which bear the Deseret brand label, are commodities that money cannot buy, because they are only to be obtained for the poor and the needy by a bishop's order. Now to establish a perspective, I'd like to begin by reviewing the mission of the Welfare Production Distribution Department and how it relates to total welfare services. Its mission is to foster the economic self-sufficiency of the saints, thereby helping to erase poverty and need from among the Latter-day Saint families. This will contribute to developing a Zion society like that of Enoch. Quoting from Moses, we read, And the Lord called his people Zion, because they were of one heart and one mind, and dwelt in, right and dwelt in righteousness, and there was no poor among them. To foster this economic self-sufficiency of the Latter-day Saint families, fathers and mothers, priesthood and Relief Society leaders are encouraged first to focus on family preparedness, an important part of which is home production, canning, garden, sewing, making of household items, and also upon home storage, on the need for saints to have a year's supply of food, clothing, and, where possible, fuel. All this is accomplished as fathers, mothers, and children respond to priesthood direction and prepare for the eventualities that lie ahead. Fathers receive instruction through their priesthood quorums, mothers from their husbands, and through Relief Society's program for provident living. A second focus, one which is within the framework of the Church preparedness as set forth by Bishop Brown, is that of ward preparedness, wherein ward priesthood and Relief Society leaders help care for those ward members who do not have adequate means. The Welfare Production Distribution Department has as its primary duties, one, assisting in the development of ward preparedness by helping church units acquire food and non-food production projects, two, managing the bishop storehouse system, and three, giving direction to the Deseret Industries program, thereby making the wards and thus the stakes and regions as self-sustaining as possible so they may, in fact, care for their own. Regarding family preparedness, as, we've, as has been mentioned, the Welfare Services Division assists priesthood and Relief Society leaders in teaching home production and storage. To highlight this area of concern, let us look at the results of a recent survey conducted by Utah State University among LDS people in Utah. The four basic food groups were surveyed, meats, fruits and vegetables, grains, and milk products. The percentage of saints who stored food is shown on this graph. As you may observe, about 5% of our church members had a year's supply of meat products. Only 3% had a year's supply of dried or canned fruits or vegetables. Approximately 18% had a year's supply of grains. In the milk group, only three families in a hundred had a year's supply of canned or powdered milk. On the average, about 30% of the church had a two-month supply of food. The remainder had little or none. This survey statistic, these survey statistics indicate that most church members are not prepared to meet month-to-month -month problems and future economic trials. Clearly, in this area of home production and storage, 
it is extremely important that priesthood and Relief Society leaders and all Latter-day Saints place greater emphasis on home storage, on obtaining and carefully storing a year's supply of food, clothing, and, where possible, fuel. In the area of home production, we would hope that members would heed the admonition of the prophets and, where possible, grow a garden, sew their own clothing, make household items, and in general become as self-sufficient as possible to prepare against the days to come. In the words of President Kimball, quoting, we are pleased that many people are planting gardens and fruit trees and are buying canning jars and lids. We congratulate those families who are listening and doing. We make a conscientious effort to look out for our own members, and we teach them to practice economy, to store a year's supply of basic commodities. Let us shift our focus now from family preparedness to ward preparedness, which includes production projects. Production projects are nonprofit activities which are operated by wards, stakes, or regions for the purpose of providing food and non-food commodities to care for the poor and the needy of the kingdom. Food projects such as farms, orchards, dairies, ranches, feedlot operations, canneries, and bakeries, and non-food projects such as rug making, handicrafts, furniture, furniture making, and sewing projects also provide a few of many opportunities where those receiving assistance may work as best they can, thereby maintaining their integrity in an age when there is more and more reliance upon so-called free government assistance. The, project, the projects also provide opportunities for families to learn to work together and to learn to sacrifice and to consecrate their energies to provide for those who are less fortunate. As noted from this chart, the greatest number of church welfare production projects were established in the 1940s. There followed a period of consolidation during the 50s and 60s. In recent years, priesthood leaders have become increasingly conscious of the need for every ward to be involved in welfare production projects. And so we have seen the number of church projects increase, until today we have 671 of them. Perhaps equally significant as the number of projects are the acres under cultivation. We now have 143,000 acres in production. We are following the Savior's counsel to provide food and for our poor and needy brothers and sisters. <laughs> this graph shows the increase in acreage producing food to care for those in need. This acreage is only sufficient to meet the current requirements to care for the poor and the needy in areas served by commodity storehouses. Under more difficult circumstances, at current levels of consumption, our food production projects will not be able to meet the needs of those who require assistance. Therefore, family preparedness with home production and storage must be the way the majority of our families take care of themselves. Ward preparedness, which means ward involvement in ward, stake, and multi-stake production projects, is only a backup system for assisting those who are unable to care for themselves. We have considerable work to do before we reach full ward preparedness, however, for only 54 percent of all wards in the Church are involved in production projects. This graph highlights the fact that we have approximately 5,000 wards worldwide. Just over half of these wards are involved in production projects on either a ward, stake, or regional level. Bishops and other priesthood leaders have a great challenge as they seek to involve all wards in production projects. In summary, with regard to production projects, the Church, one, is maintaining sufficient production capacity to assist the poor and the needy under the current usage level. Two, it is fostering more production projects so that every ward will have access to and be involved in a project. And three, 
It is encouraging families and each church unit to be as self-sufficient as possible. Turning to the Bishop's storehouse system, this slide shows the location of all the Bishop's storehouses in the church. A Bishop's storehouse is a facility from which a Bishop may obtain food, clothing, and other commodities to satisfy the economic needs of the poor and the needy in his ward. Today there are only 78 bishop storehouses in the church. These are concentrated primarily in Utah, Idaho, California, and the Northwest. A great challenge, fa challenge faces us to teach and prepare bishops and stake presidents so their people will be ready when the conditions are right for them to establish bishop's storehouses throughout the world. The bishop storehouse system is indeed the Lord's way of distributing commodities to his children who are poor and needy and cannot care for themselves. With respect to commodity distribution, this chart shows the month-by-month -month dollar value of commodities distributed from the bishop storehouses. As you can see, in January of 1974, about $450,000 worth of commodity assistance was distributed. With the current recession and other economic difficulties, the need for this commodity assistance is increasing at the rate of about 25% per year. This emphasizes the fact that current demands upon the system are growing dramatically. We must prepare now if we're to have adequate commodities stored to handle major economic problems of the future. From these storehouses, bishops assisted only 4% of the church membership last year. As you can see from this graph, assistance is increasing rapidly. The funds to provide this assistance come from fast offering contributions and from the commodity production budget. The commodity production budget is an assigned per capita amount that wards and stakes provide in commodities or cash each year to assist those in need. It is hoped that church leaders and members will be more willing to consecrate of their time and energies to see that the commodity production budget assessments are met in the dollar amount or the assigned commodity and in the time period requested. As you can see from this graph, the amount contributed in fast offerings increased at the rate of 5% a year through the 1960s. In the last several years, the amount given in fast offering increased about 15% a year. In response to the call of the priesthood leaders, 1975 fast offering donations are up 47% over a similar eight-month period last year. You leaders might check the progress of your own units. It is our hope that this trend will continue and that our members everywhere will, everywhere will be encouraged to increase their fast offerings manyfold. Of fast offerings, President Kimball has said, I think that when we are affluent, as many of us are, that we ought to be more generous. Instead of the amount saved by two or more meals of fasting, perhaps much more, seven times more, when we are in a position to do it. From fast offerings and the commodity production budget, certain reserves of both commodities and fuel have been established to meet the needs of the poor and the needy among us. We have on hand one year's supply of commodities in the distribution system for the poor and the needy. However, this supply would be quickly depleted by a major increase in demand. This fact further underscores the need for family preparedness. On another front, there is cause for alarm. It is right to care for the poor and the needy. It is wrong to give them something if they do not work to the extent of their ability for it. To provide a family with assistance without expecting them to work to the extent of their ability for what, the, for what they receive is not the Lord's way. Those who accept something for nothing lose their integrity and their self-respect, for they become parasites, living from the work and the efforts of others. The Lord has been firm in his instructions on this point, 
Everyone, both young and old, who receives assistance should work to the extent of his or her ability. Yet the statistics show that only about 25% of those families receiving assistance are working for what they receive. We feel that at least 75% of the families who receive assistance should be working in some measure for what they receive in order to maintain their spiritual strength and earn the welfare assistance received. About 25% of those receiving help are not in a position to work, although perhaps even they could do something if priesthood leaders made creative and inspired efforts to find the service that could be done. The spiritual strength of God's children is destroyed when the program is not followed as the Lord has outlined it. Our people need to work for what they receive. In summary, with respect to the distribution system, the Church is seeking to maintain reserve levels as indicated, to expand the number and accessibility of our physical bishop storehouses, and to encourage bishops and other priesthood leaders to see that those assisted work to the extent of their ability. Regarding Deseret Industries, there are at present 13 units in operation. Their sales in 1975 will total $4.6 million, which monies cover only the payroll and other operating costs of these units. The main purpose of Deseret Industries is to assist our handicapped and elderly brothers and sisters by providing them with honorable employment. In Desert Industries, the individual labors Individuals' labors are fitted to his capacity for labor. Here are found some of the happiest, kindest, and most serene people on the face of the earth. Because of Desert Industries, these, our brothers and sisters, are working. They are producing, and they are not accepting something for nothing. The present plan of Desert Industries calls for establishing more units where they are needed, and in them, to develop programs that will teach skills and attitudes and, where possible, enable these workers to obtain productive outside employment. Deseret Industries help people help themselves. All Church members who can are encouraged to shop, to donate, to help the, church in the Deseret Industries program accomplish its vital mission. We have reviewed the activities associated with the mission of the Welfare Production Distribution in the areas of family preparedness and ward preparedness. All of the efforts of this department are designed to help us provide food and non-food commodity assistance to the poor and distressed, the elderly, the young, to all of our father's children who are in need. We recognize that all areas of the Church cannot become immediately involved in total welfare services. Bishop Featherstone will discuss certain fundamental steps and wards and stakes ought to take as they prepare to implement the full welfare services program. All of these facts and principles and feelings which I have just discussed can best be summarized graphically in this 90-second film clip which is part of a film that was just finished for use at Welfare Square here in Salt Lake City. Brothers and sisters, I testify that though we do all, do all else and do not care for the needs of our people, what doth it profit? May the Lord bless us to understand this core, this heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In some